Caroline. With the new Starship 2.0 link, I understand that the customer can customize their user interface. Is that true? We're really excited that we have this new Starship link 2.0. It does add the ability to customize the field maps and translations. So let me show you an order and show you how that works. OK, I'm just going to bring in order 803. And I'm going to click on Ship Remaining just to resolve all the lines on this order quickly. One thing I want to bring your attention to is this Get Wait button here. This is a new feature that we've added to the new link. And basically, it was designed for customers that are using the pick pack functionality inside of shipping data entry. And it allows them to define the weight while they're picking and packing so that you don't have to touch the package that many times to get it actually processed. So if you're uh, scanning in your pick pack and you put your package on the scale at that point, Starship's scale interface can be used to weigh that in directly from shipping data entry. And then in the most automated case, you can actually have Starship set so that it can automatically process once you click on the Starship button and basically process it without a user interface. So I just wanted to make customers aware of that if they are using the pick pack functionality inside of shipping data entry. I'm going to go ahead and click on the shipping tab and then click on the Starship button to bring Starship up. And then Starship will come up on screen with all the information. The first dialog box that you see here is our address validation. Starship can validate zip plus four as well as residential and commercial. I'm going to go ahead and use this validated address. And now you're coming into the standard ship screen here. So there's a few things I want to highlight before we process the shipment. One is the idea of retrieving the item level information. I can drill down into my box down here in the package view to see the item that's coming in or associated to that particular order. And this really helps with processing international LTL or HAZMAT, basically any shipment or mode that requires documentation with commodity level info. So in this particular case, we're shipping domestically to Wisconsin here. Um, let me just show you on the shipment tab, just to go back to your question, Adrian, on the field maps. So if I click on the shipment tab, you'll see that the billing here is set to recipient and that there's an account number associated already. So I have used the uh, field map functionality inside of Starship to automate this process. I basically set up the ship via to map to carrier and service, which it does by default, and then also to billing. So in this case, my ship via is being translated as UPS Next Day Air bill recipient. And then I also set up a field on the AR record or the customer record for the account, just a user definable field to store that. And now when I bring it over, basically the shipper no longer has to select you know, the billing type and know the account number and manually enter those in. We can just retrieve that directly from Stage 100 to automate it and you know, make the, the shipping process faster and with less error. So another example of using the customized field maps um, is down here in the Quantum View Notify. Let me just click on this really quick and go in here just to show you another example. If I drill down into Quantum View Notify, and just in case you don't know, Quantum View Notify is basically the email notification provided by UPS. So you'll see that the first email address that we're sending to is just the standard email that's associated to the ship to on the order. But these other two email notifications have been added through the interface, through the customized interface maps. So this particular swetland at abc.com is the salesperson that's associated to the order. And you'll notice here that we set the salesperson to receive both the ship and the exception notification. So if there was any delay with the shipment, maybe for weather or for some other reason, the carrier would notify the salesperson that the shipment's delayed and maybe it wouldn't make it to the recipient on time. So this can really allow the salesperson to provide a higher level of customer service by proactively notifying the customer that, hey, your package is delayed and maybe you should receive it tomorrow. And then the third notification here is just a fixed field that we set to always send a ship notification to ABC ship notifications. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and process this order. 
So if I um, click on Ship and Process, Starship will generate the barcoded shipping labels and then update stage 100 with all the information. So let's take a look at the shipping labels that are being produced here. This is a standard uh, label that would be affixed to the package. I'm showing this in 8.5 by 11. Typically, it gets printed to a thermal label printer. Here's the packing list. So because Starship's retrieving the item level information from the order, we can now print the packing list for you. This can also be printed to a 4 by 6 on a thermal label printer. And then here we're back to the summary package tracking, which gives you the ability to see the tracking number, carrier, all that information that gets stored inside of Stage 100 so that you have that for your reference. I just also wanted to point out here this Starship icon that you can see from package tracking. This is going to be in a future release of Starship. Basically, when you click on this, it'll allow you to see the dashboard and allow you to track any mode of shipment that you have. So let's just click OK on this. And you'll notice here that the freight amount is set to 0. And that's because we set the billing to bill recipient. So you wouldn't want to charge the, the recipient twice on the freight amount. So that's why the freight's 0 there. But Starship will update that if the billing type is prepaid. Or if you really wanted to still bill the recipient, even though it is bill recipient, you can set that in a rule inside of Starship as well. So all you really have to do now is to click Accept. And then you're back to the standard shipping data entry screen where you can enter your next order that you're ready to ship. That's my example for showing how field maps can help automate the shipping process. Did that answer your question, Adrian?